Unsolved Mysteries, beginning at 7 on NBC tonight. Live at 5, Central Iowa's number one afternoon newscast. Relief pours in for the victims of Hurricane Andrew on a day of prayer and healing. This is NBC Nightly News, reported by Gary Gutley. Substituting tonight, Deborah Roberts. Good evening. One week ago tonight, people in Florida and all along the Gulf Coast were preparing for a storm. What they got was beyond anything they might have been prepared for. Now, almost a week after Hurricane Andrew, the reconstruction of lives and the battered landscape is only just beginning. Tonight, we're going to take a look at where things stand in South Florida with some of the people of NBC News who've been consumed by this disaster from the beginning. Our own NBC News correspondents and those of our station in Miami, WTVJ, which has been covering Andrew around the clock. We begin with NBC's Noah Nelson. Noah? Yeah, but you get a sense that it's been a very difficult week for the people in uh, this area, and you get a sense that they're ready to fight back. Many of the worshipers at this Baptist church lost their homes to Hurricane Andrew. They wondered why. But I'm just saying that God has permitted it, you see, and I am saying that God will be with us through it all. Amen. People in this Haitian community were asked to keep the faith, too, even though their church was destroyed in the storm. Just look at everything around here. But the Lord has spared us. He's given us another chance. So we should be grateful. Even in some of the hardest hit areas, there's a new sense of hope, brought on by the tons of private and government aid that's pouring in. Aid donated by people like Elsie Carter. When you see the little ones, really, you know, it just affects you. Every time we watch it on TV, you wonder if this will cry. All that we need is a flashlight. Aid is arriving so fast, it's backing up at official distribution centers. Finally, I decided to take a convoy, come right out here to where the people are living, and give it right to the people instead of wasting three days while it sits in a dump someplace. The skies over southern Florida are crowded with aircraft carrying personnel and relief supplies, spraying insecticides to kill mosquitoes, and delivering tents for the homeless. A tent city for 10,000 will be built by troops whose last big assignment was Desert Storm. 100% different. It's, we're doing something for the people at home rather than uh, you know, going away all the time. Those C-5 transports that brought in the tents did their job, but according to military personnel we spoke to, uh, there aren't enough people to put those tents together. Deborah? Thanks, Noah. One of the most critical things before and after the hurricane struck was the need to convey vital information to the victims. Our Miami station, WTVJ, made that the highest priority. While the storm raged outside, WTVJ stayed on the air. And since many viewers lost power, WTVJ was simulcast on the radio. The station's weathercaster offered survival tips to viewers during the hurricane. You need to stay in that enclosed room there because you are going to experience this intense storm for a good while longer. WTVJ has been on the air 24 hours a day. Are uh, stressing the importance of not calling 911 unless it is a, uh, a life or death emergency. Happened. 30 reporters have been covering the storm all week. You stayed there? Yeah, I stayed in Country Walk. It was awful. It was awful. We thought the house was going to come right in on us. WTVJ had its own problem staying on the air. It lost one of its satellite dishes to Andrew. Still, the news of the hurricane went on nonstop and continues tonight. And one of WTVJ's reporters, Jose diaz Balart, joins us this evening from Homestead, Florida, one of the hardest hit communities. Jose, how's it going there tonight? Debra, it is very difficult to reconstruct what has been destroyed to the ground. I'm at the DeSoto Mobile Home Park right here in Homestead. Helicopters landing right over here. But I want to just show you what it is that the mobile home looks like, park looks like. We are standing on top of what once was a home. It was sheared off by the storm and just flew back like so many of these homes into the back part of the, of the park. And there are cars under rubble. There are houses under rubble. There are actual mobile homes wrapped around trees. 
people are trying to figure out how to start rebuilding. They are going through here trying to find some mementos, something that reminds them of their past, a very difficult situation for them. And right now as we approach the curfew, uh, most people have left here, but there are still some here. Uh, the Calvin family, that's uh, Calvin Simpson and John Simpson are here, and they've uh, lost everything uh, they had. Uh, Calvin, thanks for being with us. Uh, tell me how it is to, to come back home. I know you all evacuated, and you find out that your home is nothing but rubble. Uh, what, it is, what is it that you've got to do now? Well, <laughs> as you can see, we can't live in this kind of stuff. It's going out, they're going to have to boil the park off, so, uh, Managers said they're gonna bulldoze it all out after the people got the insurance people in here to try to get what insurance they've gotten. And some people in here probably don't have any. I'm one of the fortunate ones, I do. And most of my friends that I've lived in the park here, uh, my close friends, they've all got insurance. Yeah, well, it's, it's a lot of people, as a matter of fact, we spoke with here tonight, do not have insurance, and they're trying to figure out how to rebuild. A negative part of this whole thing is there are scavengers back here, and they're picking through the rubble. They're getting anything they can. We just saw uh, two people over there taking tires from a car, and they don't seem to be concerned about the fact that this is a, the end of, of people's lives right here. Back to you, Deborah. All right, that's an incredible sight. Thanks, Jose. Another key person involved in reporting about the hurricane and preparing people for it was Brian Norcross. He reports on weather for WTVJ and has studied hurricanes. His advice during the storm has been credited with saving lives. Brian Norcross joins us tonight from WTVJ. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Deborah. What kind of information did you find viewers were looking for during the storm? Well, in the middle of the storm, at the most intense part of the storm, I think the key thing that we were able to do was give them an idea of how long it was going to last. And it was really prompted by a young girl that called from her bathroom with her pregnant sister uh, right there with her in the bathroom and her father and her brother trying to hold that door closed. And I came to find out after the storm since I, I said, Madeline, you must keep that door. You must hold that door closed. If all of you have to get behind it, you've got to hold it closed. And so many people were in that same situation of ha trying to hold on for their lives under a mattress, in a closet, in a bathroom, and they just had to hold on. And we were able to tell them, because we have the equipment here at our television station, to know exactly where the storm was or is, uh, how, about how long they were going to have to put up with it, maybe another 15 minutes. And, and that probably was the key thing. All right, Brian Norcross, a calm voice in the midst of all that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Well, still to come tonight, we'll take a look at the hurricane's destruction from the air. And on Focus tonight, credit card interest rates and how you can beat the high costs. The styling of the Infinity Q45 has a beauty that increases as time passes. The interior offers a lasting pleasure, an enduring luxury, which is important because when it comes to a luxury car, as well as most other things in life, infatuation is easy. True love is what takes a little time. Our annual credit card fees are sending you through the roof. Carry the card that charges no annual fee and stay on firm financial ground. It pays to discover. What if you could get the fiber you need for regularity in a crisp, delicious wafer? Well, now you can. Metamucil wafers. All the effectiveness of Metamucil, and it tastes like a cookie. Metamucil wafers. This is how it looks tonight from the air over southwest Dade County. Kerry Sanders of WTVJ has been surveying the damage since Andrew swept through South Florida. Carrie, what's different now from when you first started looking at the hurricane? Well, as you look out here, you can see that, believe it or not, some people have actually begun to clean up. I know these pictures perhaps do not show you that people are cleaning up if you haven't seen the pictures before. But we're looking at homes that actually have some green yards now that are not completely filled with debris. So, Deborah, there is some good news. As a matter of fact, there are even some people down here who are in the process of putting tar paper on the tops of their roofs. Carrie, looking at that destruction below, it's astounding to think that people survived. How did they? Well, it is amazing that some people survived this, and some people did it with some incredible courage. In this area, there was a home that I met a group of people, a family of four, and the winds were coming, 
They were building, first went the living room, then went the bedroom, the roof was tearing off, and this family knew they had to get out, and they didn't know where to go. They grabbed a maple table, each one got on the leg of, of the table, they put the tabletop over their heads, and they crouched out, and then they crawled out in the middle of the storm, the winds blowing well over 125 to 140 miles an hour, and they crawled to a neighbor's home. One of those four people was 90 years old. That's incredible. How is it that some of those blocks managed to survive with little damage while others are totally gone? Well, it's, uh, it may be a matter of luck, and it also may be a matter of when you see the pictures, it looks like some of the homes survived. As you look in this area, perhaps from the top on the roofs, it may look like some of the homes survived, but they did not. I'm going to take you to a home right here where as you approach it this direction, it appears that the home may have done minimal damage. But then as we get over the living room, you can see the roof is gone. The homes in this area, this is the Stonewood area, were dream homes. People paid $150,000 for these homes. And now they're gone. Deborah? Terry, along the way, I've seen that there were some swimming pools that appeared to be full and then others are empty. Any idea what happened? Well, what you had was, apparently during the storm, according to witnesses who stayed in their homes and decided that they would look out, apparently there were tornadoes spawned during the storm. So during the storm, you had the tornadoes, and it ripped up some areas, knocking stuff in all different directions, Deborah. All right, Kerry Sanders, thank you very much. And now back to the ground, to a part of Miami called Country Walk. Some of the residents there believed they would be spared from the fury of Hurricane Andrew. That's because Country Walk is well inland. They were mistaken, though. We want to go there tonight. Susan Wallace joins us from Country Walk. Susan, what happened there? Deborah, we are about 15 miles southwest of the city of Miami, and I want to see, I want you to see what happened here. We are in a community that was once home to the up-and-comers in the city of Miami. Now, plenty of cases of people being flat out, down and out. This was not in the evacuation zone. Most of the people in this area were inside their homes when this storm hit. And they are the people that are telling us horror stories of having uh, sitted out in their bathrooms, holding doors closed to prevent the wind from coming in. Now, there had always been questions about the safety and the integrity of the structures out here, specifically about the roofing trusses, the sections that hold the roof into place. In fact, we had done investigative reports in the late 80s relating to that subject. Well, clearly, those questions have been answered by Hurricane Andrew. And we understand within the last 24 hours, a group of Country Walk residents have actually filed an act uh, uh, claim, a suit against the developer, Arvita in this case, and they're hoping the developer will be held accountable. All right, Susan Wallace, thanks so much for your report. Well, next up, money, credit cards, and interest rates. Red Devil Enamel. You can always count on its durable finish. Harder than ordinary paints, its beauty lasts and lasts. Red Devil Enamel, for the finish of a lifetime. Dear Thompsons, I swear by Thompsons Water Seal, but recently when it ran out, my son finished with another brand. Then it rained. What a difference. Thompsons beat it up, the other brand nothing. Thanks for a product you can believe in. Marvin Snotty, Locust Grove, Virginia. Oh, great, just what my stomach needs. Here comes my obnoxious boss. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Uh, oh, boy. Better make it Maalox. Because for moments like this, nothing Mylanta makes neutralizes as much stomach acid as Extra Strength Maalox Plus. So why take anything else? We were just talking about oh, you. Nice, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> my mother's here, too. Great. Nobody knows your stomach better, so you better make it Maalox. Of all the things around your house that need batteries, there's one thing that needs a good, fresh battery most of all. See your Allstate agent for a free home fire safety brochure. And please, check the battery in your smoke detector often. On Focus this evening, our topic is money, your money, and what it costs to buy on credit. Jeff Madrick is here now to bring, or to bring us up to date on credit card interest. Jeff, a few banks are now lowering the rates, right? 
They sure are, Deborah. But beware of claims by big banks that they are cutting their credit card interest rates. Most credit card holders still pay 18 and 19 percent annual interest on their balances each month. But more and more small banks are offering cards with 12 and a half percent rates and even lower. Okay, sir, I have an application in mail for you first thing in the morning, Mr. Reed. The phone is ringing off the hook at AFBA Bank, the private banking arm of the Armed Forces Benefit Association in Alexandria, Virginia. One of two dozen or so banks across the country now issuing low-rate credit cards. AFBA is offering Visa and MasterCards at an interest rate of 12.5%. 17,000 applications are coming in each month. George Miller is the president. Ex exceeding all expectations. It just proves what a low rate will do. If a cardholder is approved for credit by AFBA, he or she is immediately sent a few convenience oh. checks. So in other words, he just writes a check and pays off the balance on his the, old Visa yes, card? Yes, that's right. That's right. And the check is processed like any other normal check. And it pays off its old balance and uh, transfers that balance to our low rate card. Critics say the big banks that dominate the credit card business are still keeping rates too high. L.G. Holstein, head of the nonprofit Bank Card Holders of America, says the average credit card holder still pays 18.5%. People who have paid their bills on time year in and year out and still find that their banks are charging them 17% or more need to switch. They need to send a message to the banks. The banks are ripping them off. Here's what you're saving if you do switch. The average credit card holder has a $2,500 balance every month. By switching from a card that charges 18.5% to a card like AFBA's that charges 12.5%, the cardholder can save $180 a year in interest payments. The new rates being offered keep falling, and the number of credit card switchers is snowballing. The Bank Card Holders of America publishes a list for $4 of banks in the nation that offer good deals. We, so far this year, have sold nearly 200,000 lists of banks that offer better deals. Now, what does that tell us? It tells us that people want a better deal on a credit card, but they simply don't know where to go to find them. Well, you need a good credit rating, but not a perfect one to be approved for credit by the low-rate banks. What hurts your chances most is if you have balances on five or six different credit cards. Good Deborah? advice. Thanks, Jeff. We'll have more news as we continue. What is the true luxury of owning an Infiniti G20? A luxurious interior? Superior handling? Or when you run out of gas in the middle of nowhere? Infinity will go to extraordinary lengths to help you. The G20 Total Ownership Experience from Infinity. In our universe, there is always the unknown, the unpredictable. All we can do is prepare for it. AT&T is now installing FastStar. It can detect a cable cut instantly, so 800 calls can get back in minutes instead of hours. We can send flowers for any occasion, anywhere, but only if our 800 service is up and running. Our 800 service isn't just a phone line, it's a lifeline. I miss you. AT&T has the most reliable 800 service, period. AT&T, call us. It was unreal. You woke up with morning breath. You were meeting Miss Wonderful for breakfast and instead of Minty Fresh Scope. Where's my scope? There was something from the medicine in mouthwash. It looked blue, but it still smells somewhat medicine. -y. I need my scope. It's okay. Relax. It was all a dream. You do have scope. It's minty through and through and kills 90% of morning breath bacteria. So you use minty fresh scope and you kiss morning breath goodbye. Painting your house shouldn't mean a second mortgage. Just get to Sears Whole House Paint Sale. Pick up Sears Best Weather Beater Exterior Flat, only $15.99 a gallon. Easy living interior semi-gloss or satin finishes and matching bright white ceiling paint. All only $13.99 a gallon. Get to the Whole House Paint Sale today. I'll get Sears. And save money at Sears. You can count on me. In Pittsburgh, that 35-year-old man who received a baboon's liver has developed an infection. The transplant, the first of its kind, 
was performed two months ago. Doctors have downgraded his condition to serious. And in Watoma, Wisconsin, a tornado caused destruction in an area 21 miles long and up to a half a mile wide. It left two people dead and dozens of rural homes and farm buildings demolished. Overseas today, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein said he will resist the no-fly zone imposed over southern Iraq by the U.S. and its allies to protect Shiite Muslims in that region. But he didn't say how. In Somalia, the U.S. relief effort to aid the starving continues. Charles McLean reports. Operation Provide Relief is the most significant American response so far to the famine in the Horn of Africa. By now, the images from Somalia haunt the conscience of the world. Thousands already dead from starvation. How did it come to this? Start with this man, Mohamed Siad Bari, former president of Somalia. An ally first of the Soviet Union, then of the U.S., he was driven from power in January of 1991. He was a cruel dictator and few tears were shed when he left Mogadishu a year and a half ago. But in the struggle for power since then, things have gone from bad to worse. Rival clans, which fought for control here for almost six months, declared a truce in March. But the violence continues. At the port, food piles up as relief workers try to figure out how to get it to the starving. There are a lot of people with guns, and this is some of the problems that certainly contribute to the problems that we face in getting food out. The 3,000 extra troops authorized by the United Nations should help protect relief shipments. But local warlords may fight them for the food. On Friday, two members of the UN advance team were shot and wounded in Mogadishu. Food delivered by the U.S., distributed by relief workers, and protected by the United Nations will likely save many lives in coming months. But in the chaos and anarchy of Somalia, many thousands more will surely die. Charles McLean, NBC News, Mogadishu, Somalia. In the former Yugoslavia, in Sarajevo, the violence goes on. A shell exploded in a busy residential area, killing at least seven people. Dozens were wounded. A United Nations spokesman says the explosion appeared to have been targeted directly on that residential area. Sarajevo has been under siege from Serb forces opposed to Bosnian independence from Yugoslavia. And there will be something else going on in Yugoslavia this week. Another kind of contest. A rematch in chess. Fischer versus Spassky. Rick Davis explains. Somewhere on this island, there's a reclusive bearded man protected by walls of stones and bodyguards. The island is Sveti Stefan, a tourist attraction and a small part of the little left of Yugoslavia. The man is 49-year-old Bobby Fischer. He plays chess. His next game will be on the island. A rematch of old champions, 1972, Reykjavik, Iceland. Bobby Fischer plays Soviet world champion Boris Spassky, the Cold War on a chessboard. Fischer's demands, threats to walk out, his playing style, made the genial Spassky a local hero, but Spassky lost. It is now ranked 101st in the world. The new champion said back then, The main thing I want to do is play more chess. I feel I haven't played enough chess. But after a hero's welcome in Brooklyn, Fischer vanished from chess, retreated from the world. He was affiliated with the Worldwide Church of God in Pasadena and reported to be near poverty. But the winner of the match on this island will get over $3 million. Fisher Spassky II is being billed as the World Championship. That's World Championship in inverted commas. I mean, Fisher sees himself as the World Champion. He saw the historical process stopping when he won the championship. But playing in war-torn Yugoslavia is a violation of UN sanctions. Fisher vows he will, even though the U.S. government says he could be jailed or fined absolutely his way of proving that he doesn't care at all what the rest of the world thinks. But what do those who play chess for the joy of it think of Fisher's comeback? At the King's Head Tavern, where the house brew is called Checkmate, we heard. Even if it's slightly illegal, I hope it takes place. He was my hero. I mean, I, I mean, you know, he inspired me and lots of others to play. Rick Davis, NBC News, London. In a moment, the hurricane and the heroes. I'd like to talk to you about an invisible problem. The invisible bacteria that cause nasty denture odor. 
Unfortunately, antibacterial effodent not only cleans the stains you can see, it kills the odor causing bacteria you can't for clean, fresh dentures. So while the problem may be invisible, the solution is clearly evident. Darling, we're on TV. Antibacterial Everdent cleans what you can see and what you can't. I teach archery, so I always have to hit my target. Thanks to the always on target Hearts 2 in 1 team, ridding bow of fleas and ticks is easy and just as accurate. First, use Hearts 2 in 1 Rid Flea Shampoo. It kills fleas and ticks, leaving him really clean. Then, a Hearts 2 in 1 collar for up to five months of long lasting protection. The Hearts Team, 2-in-1 Rid Flea Shampoo and the 2-in-1 Collar. Targets and kills your pet's fleas and ticks. They really work. Hearts, everything good for your pet. Some full commission brokers are finding more and more ways to charge more and more fees. Even annual fees on IRAs, just for the privilege of doing business with them. But not us. At Charles Schwab, we offer the no-fee IRA. And we guarantee that you'll never pay an annual fee for the rest of your life. So if you're tired of finding new fees every time you open your statement, maybe it's time to come to Schwab. Day after day, you make those glasses of thick Metamucil disappear. Why not make them all disappear with FiberCon? Doctor recommended FiberCon gives you the same fiber regularity in tablets. Easy to swallow tablets. Get Doctor recommended FiberCon. As the people of South Florida looked to the giant task of recovering from the hurricane, they found something that wasn't lost in the storm or the chaos that followed. It's called the human spirit, giving. As Bob Dotson shows us, it's out there in abundance. There he stood, homeless, a knucklehold from oblivion. Go on a shelter. Saved, as so many were saved, by nameless heroes who soon would be homeless too. Every cop in Florida City, south of Miami, all 25 of them, is now without a house. This thing ain't gonna kick my butt, or it shouldn't kick nobody else's, but you know, we still have our life, we still have our you know, our dignity and all that. But a cop can only be a part-time victim. Those in Miami still work 12 hours a day solving other people's problems. Like everyone here, they must rely on someone else to take their sting away. Right here, people, they don't have no place to go. So Lucilda and Abel Chavez this is another family. take them all in. 70 Homestead, Florida families have lived in this small motel all week. 30 more come and go every day. No one pays. They couldn't anyway. They had all they could do to survive before. Now it's going to be next to impossible. Bruce Gren has no insurance. Still, he stays to care for 25 neighbors. This man here was buried under his tree. I'm correct. Delicious. First I've eaten in three days. All right. A sort of antique kindness is the common thread that pulls them all together. Said it's all one family now, mother and father. <laughs> Wait, we got some funny looking kids. <laughs> These heroes have lost everything. I had just finished this thing. This thing was really nice. But deep down, they have become the people they wanted to be. That's my bathtub in case you want to use it. <laughs> Bob Dotson, NBC News, Miami. That's nightly news for this Sunday night. We'll have the latest hurricane developments tomorrow morning, beginning on NBC News at sunrise and today. I'm Deborah Roberts. Good night for NBC News. This week on Today, we'll meet the newest Emmy winners. Also, Oprah Winfrey, Jason Robards, Lily Tomlin, and Olympic gold medalist Jennifer Capriotti. This week on Today. What's clear? What isn't? Find out September 4th. Prove your baseball trivia knowledge by playing the WHO TV 13 in Wendy's Baseball Sports Quiz. Get your entry.